it's Stacy and welcome to my channel. I'm so glad you're here. Today I'm going to be making a card, a little hummingbird and flower card, and it is going to be all Copic colored. Um, today is Saturday Morning Makes, which is hosted by Jill Norwood. Hi Jill, if you're watching. Um, Jill has an open collaboration that she started back during COVID so that everyone could craft together so she could make time for herself to craft. And all you have to do is use the hashtag SatmornMakes and upload a video, a picture, whatever social media you use. And it doesn't have to be paper crafting. It could be anything. It could be sewing. It could be crocheting. Those are things I like to do. It could be painting. It could be drawing, coloring, cooking, um, macrame, whatever it is that your craft is clay anything and I'll leave the information down below and I'll leave a link to Jill's channel today I'm using um, it is Trinity stamps blooming bunch blooming bunch stamp let's say that three times fast pretty pink posh hummingbird thanks uh, hero, hero arts cut and stamp blessings waffle flower a7 rectangle frame dies and Copics, and then it's Memento black ink for stamping with. Um, if I leave anything out, it'll all be in the description. But what I did was I stamped that blooming bunch, and then I stamped it on the cardstock I'm going to use to color, and then I stamped it on copy paper. I cut a mask, as you can see, I only cut around the edges that needed to be masked, and then just cut, you know, where it wouldn't impede on the hummingbirds being stamped. Stamped it, held it down with some post-it note tape. Then I went and did that hummingbird, the third one, to make sure that it was going to fit and properly before I removed the mask from the um, bouquet and then finished stamping it. And here I'm going to color the hummingbirds. I'm going to color one at a time. Um, I'm only going to show one because this is a very long process to color. Um, and I'm using the RV families. This is the second time I've had to do this voiceover. If anybody has any tips, let me know, because it cut me off at the very end of the video. It only had like three minutes left, you guys. So how I cope it color, and I'm gonna ramble. This is only my second edit, edited video and my second voiceover ever. Um, I'm looking for suggestions, any tips, anything you want me to do. Um, what I'm thinking about doing is um, getting a subscription to some sort of music provider so that I can put music over the coloring and then just explain where I need to, what's going on. Um, if you like hearing me talk, I'll try to share some stuff about myself or my family and my life. Uh, let me know uh, what you prefer. I like a little bit of both when I watch channels, so just let me know. Um, I'm using the RV families as you can see I had I sh the cap should have been up there and I work from darkest to lightest and then back and those RVs can be tricky to blend and it may be that I have a gap somewhere in the colors because I don't have all the Copics I have almost all of them but not quite and they're difficult to blend I noticed like the V family is difficult which I'll discuss when we get to one of the flowers um, but I colored all these hummingbirds the same way except for one I switch the colors from you know green head to the pinkish magenta body and I just work from dark to light and I like to leave a gap for highlights on the very edges so it may not be accurate as to realism but I like it because I feel like it gives it a little bit more shape um, and I'm just I'm coloring these little guys in and so we finished that hummingbird together and I'm going to move on to, I believe, the little flowers. And I use the BG family. And here, pretty soon, I promise I put the caps in. I, I'm i learning, guys. And look, I thought I had that one in screen. But it will, I'll move it. It'll show it later. Um, and I'm just going with the darkest color, like leaving that outer edge highlighted. And that middle petal, I noticed that on a lot of these flowers, they look like hearts to me. So I wanted them to look like puffy hearts and give that shape like a puffy heart to the petal. And so that's why I chose to shade this the way I did. 
and you'll see in some places which I didn't notice while I was coloring because I don't you guys I don't have the best eyesight and my glasses I got I don't know I got my eyes done I maybe six seven months ago but my eyes have declined so much that I need to go back because I can't see um, but you'll see I go out of the lines a couple of times but it doesn't matter because we're gonna color that background with Copic markers and it'll push that color and hide it now with the leaves I used the same YG family that I did the same YG markers except for the lightest for the leaves. I wanted it to have some continuity and so I didn't want to bring in too many different shades of green or too many different colors and I thought I was kind of pushing the boundaries on the amount of colors I bring in. The one thing I wish I would have done was um, maybe something a little bit different with those greens because they kind of blend in with the birds but I still like it I still think it's a turns out to be be a very pretty card and beautiful and so with this purple flower the V's I have a really hard time blending them anybody else out there color with Copics and have a hard time I don't know if I have a really big gap where I'm missing something but I've heard others talk about that there's not like a natural blending family if you guys know one let me know so I actually used the BV markers the blue violets and I brought in a V and that darkest shade is V09 I believe and that's it there I believe I think I show show you but if not I'll put it down in the description and I just keep working back and forth from darkest to lightest and then I get more confident and then I start doing all the petals or you know the majority of them instead of one at a time I just had to get comfortable with um, what I was coloring and I I did a mock-up card here's a tip for you guys like I didn't mask it properly so I went ahead and used it but sometimes I just even if I have a card that I'm masking and I'm not quite sure what colors I want to use I'll just stamp it on some cardstock and pick out my colors like the mock-up card some of my flowers had multiple colors on them because I wasn't happy with the color that I started with or I wanted to try a different color because I didn't quite like how it looked. Um, because I feel like almost with an image that has this much in it with, with all the different flowers, it can get very busy very quickly with too many colors. Unless you're doing a rainbow and to me the, the skill of those that do rainbow cards is the way they lay it out in the proportions which this one I almost did but it wasn't proportionally right but you'll see um, so I'm just gonna keep working on this and you know I'm up here in Northern California and I believe we have the park fire going on right now I think that's what it's called we have it's going it is going and it's one I believe it's gonna be the largest wildfire we've ever had here in California and um, thank goodness we're up a little bit more north. We're close. Our county has been evacuated in certain areas, but on the side of town we're on, hopefully we won't have that because I've got some containment. But my husband was outside, and the reason I bring this up is we're talking about um, rainbows. He was outside today, or last night, and it, he was talking about how we were supposed to get some possible rain. And I said, well, hopefully it comes without the lightning. Um, and there was this beautiful rainbow in the smoke in the sky. It was dusk. There was no rain. And I just thought, oh, how beautiful. Because there's God's promise. Through all the muck, there it was. So I thought I had to, sh I just shared that because we were, I brought up rainbows. Um, so I just keep working this flower and you're going to see, I'm going to go back in. I'm going to get a little bit darker with it. Um, I'm going to go... Uh, add a little bit more of those shadows in because like I said that V color the BVs blend well but the V being put in there um, kind of it can go weird and so I'm just going back in and touching it up to deepen those shadows and I was inspired to make this card because my husband has taken a liking to all the hummingbirds that we have in our area which I'm sure, I mean, anybody that lives here in, in the U.S. probably has hummingbirds. But he's put up multiple hummingbird feeders out on our front uh, walkway area. And then um, we had one out back, but they don't 
like to go out back because we have so many trees covering our back patio area. I don't think they've found it yet. So he puts them out there and he watches them and he calls them his kids. And he is so intrigued by them. He's so fascinated. He talks about the different personalities they have. He's starting to recognize different um, different uh, individual hummingbirds and they're getting more comfortable with him. He said, I'll be one of those ones having like one of those can cozies or whatever with the things where they're feeding off my head. <laughs> And he probably will. Um, he actually had one of their feathers that had landed on him the other day when he was out there. And he brought it in. He was excited and showed me. And it was so tiny. And I don't know where he put it. And then I started cleaning the next day. And I thought, oh my goodness, why is this so dusty in here? And it was little candle holder things that I have. And I hadn't cleaned them out in a while. And... <laughs> He had put the feather in there and I didn't know and I didn't have my glasses on so you guys it really looked like dust to me and he came home and goes where's my feather and I felt so bad he kept telling me it was okay but I felt so bad well he was out there earlier today and another one landed on him so I think he was meant to have one he was excited and brought it in they're so tiny I mean without my glasses they literally look like a puff of dust and I, I was thinking gosh how much how did all this dust get in here but all right let me talk about the coloring so I brought in this yellow um, and I tried to keep it not super bright because I didn't want it to compete so much with that bright pink and bright green and so I went with some paler yellows but tried to bring in some darker ones for the shadows and my thought was well let me make this a daisy it ended up looking like a sunflower. My husband comes over because the center, I ended up doing neutral colors. I was struggling with it. And I was gonna do a pale green, and I didn't like that. There was too much green on the card already. And then I was going to do orange, and the orange just wasn't right. Like, I thought, well, that would be almost every color of the rainbow. And it, so you'll see, I went with brown. I'll talk about it, it's a neutral. Um, and I think it turned out okay, he let me know. You guys, what's your favorite flower? I mean, because my husband came over and I asked him for help for the center of that flower. And he said, we'll do it brown, it's a sunflower. And I said, no, I want it to be a daisy. It was like trying to make, you know, this rainbow because I had added so many colors at that point. And he says, well, I'm, I take this too literal. Maybe, maybe I'm not the best one to pick. And I ended up going brown and I think it turned out okay, but my favorite flower is a calla lily. I love the, the big tropical ones. The, they even have like red ones or um, I'm pretty sure they have like a violet colored one too, but I know they have red and they have white, but I love the white ones. So my husband always buys me peace lily plants because they're so similar and they're easier to care for. Um, my daughter's favorite flower is a tulip. My mother-in-law's was a carnation my mother's was a California poppies. What's yours? Leave in the comments which, what's your favorite flower. And I love roses, but I can't stand the scent of them. They make me nauseated and everybody thinks that's so weird. You guys tell me if you have any weird things like that too. So here I'm going in with the brown. I made the C shape and then I made the circle in the center of the C or the, like an oval so that it's indented very much like a sunflower or like daisies or even I think cone flowers have a little bit of an indent but I could be wrong. So I was trying to add some you know, realism for the mo what you can for hummingbirds that are fluorescent pink, right? So I'm just going back and deepening those shadows. And then I skipped a lot because I started out with outlining and trying to make a, sh a drop shadow for that background with different B's and I ended up I think going with B1 because it took, I had to re-ink my marker and it took so much ink. If I, and then I took these waffle flower um, nesting A7 dies, they're five, in, you know, the five by seven set. Um, and I, I didn't originally plan to cut that panel down but I did because I wasn't real happy with that background if I had it to do again 
I would mask the image and do ink blending in the back and maybe add some clouds or something with some texture in the background. And then I would take a Copic marker to fill in all the little its and bits in between the flowers so that I didn't have to mask all the innards of it. Um, so that to that matches the ink. This right here is a Hero Arts um, cut and stamp set. It's the sets that come with a word, die, the word, and then little sentiments to go with it. And I cut that out of black cardstock. And here I'm just cleaning up some rough edges I had and pushing some glue that may have oozed out. And then I'm not forgetting the tittle, you know, the dot for the eye. And um, I'm just layering that up. And there's a sentiment. I'm, I'm using the grid lines on my Misty to make sure it's straight. I st still don't think it was straight, but yeah, you guys, I'm a nitpicker. I think that the blessings was maybe crooked. And I'm stamping that there because I like to make cards that I can use for a lot of different occasions. So I could make this a birthday card. I can make this a thinking of you card. I can make it a get well card. I can make it uh, just because I think it's pretty neutral when I when you use sentiments like this. Um, and then I use the the ATG, the, the automatic tape glider or automatic tape gun, however you want to say it. And if anybody's interested, I got that at Joann's recently. It was on clearance for $18.99 or $18 or something like that. And I'm not sure if I totally like it. You have to, it's really sticky. I probably will like it in the end, but that I added the art glitter glue so I had a little bit of wiggle room. Those were, I can't remember what gemstones is were, but I did pause it and freeze it on the screen. Um, I thought I wrote it down, but I don't have them up here on the computer. So I embellished with that, and then I'm using the Spectrum Noir glitter pen, and I'm going over their bodies, and I didn't want to do their entire bodies, but do you know how sometimes their feathers are iridescent on some of the birds? That was my thought process on that. So I'm adding that shimmer. A little shimmer shimmer. I just think they're so cute. I'm going to show you here. There it is. Isn't that pretty? So that's my card, guys. Go on over and check out Jill's channel. Join in on the fun. And thanks for coming on over. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.